Hi, welcome to my vlog. I'm Charles Michael Garcia from BSC 3Y1-1. And now, I'm going to discuss and tell you about primary causal and contributory factors in juvenile delinquency. Let's go. And now, I'm going to search about primary causal factors. Based on my research, primary causal factor is a numerous forms of psychological problems in children and adolescents can be caused by a variety of factors, including low socioeconomic position, parents, lack of concern, feelings of inadequacy, and lack of attention, and many other factors. For instance, excessive hostility, complexes, and sadness. Of course, I have few examples about uh, primary factors in terms of uh, juvenile delinquency. First is family. The first and most fundamental social institution in charge of a child overall development. And then teaches the youngsters to control his impulses and to comply with the laws that specify when and uh, how intensely personal needs can be met in ways that uh, are acceptable to society. Also, the fundamentals, subject in which uh, kids acquire the uh, attitudes and values that will uh, direct their behavior throughout their life. Also, that include the family breakup and the blended family. Blended family, uh, nuclear families are made up of one parent from each of two Households and their combined offspiring. Also, they are the result of uh, divorces and uh, separations, also the remarriage. Also, we have the family conflict or the uh, family conflict. Teenage uh, misbehavior may be a uh, sign of impending family strife, which sparks additional teen misbehavior in a never-ending cycle of tension and crime. Next is intrafamily violence, an atmosphere of strife and conflict inside the family. Children who grow up uh, in uh, dysfunctional homes frequently display delinquent tendencies since they have learned early on that aggressiveness is beneficial. Also child abuse. Any injury to a child physical, emotional, or sexual, for which there is no logical explanation, including failing to provide uh, sufficient care and attention. And battered child syndrome, non-accidental physical harm to children caused by parents or other adults in charge. And my final example of primary causal factors is the forms of abuse and neglect. And also we have physical abuse and physical neglect. In physical abuse, uh, involves hurling, shooting, setting someone on fire, drowning, biting, or uh, purposefully uh, disfiguring a kid. Also, shaken baby syndrome is a type of child abuse that happens when a uh, baby or young toddler is shaken erratically. On the physical neglect, stems uh, from parents failing to give their kids enough food shelter or uh, medical treatment as well as failing to keep them uh, safe from physical harm. But wait, what is juvenile delinquency? Juvenile delinquency, any young person whose conduct is characterized by antisocial behavior that is beyond parental control and subject to legal action. And now I'm going to search about contributory factor and I'm gonna show you the time lapse while I'm researching. Let's go. Let's proceed to the contributor factor. Here, we have adolescent-peer relations. Although parents are the main influence and focus during a child's uh, formative years, adolescents seek out 
a uh, dependable peer group as the quantity and variety of friendship rise. And then, small groups of friends who share intimate knowledge and confidences. Also, influence of fears to delinquency, here we have five. First is the friends start to influence decisions more than parents during puberty. Second, during adol adolescence, friends began to have a bigger impact on decisions than parents. Third, adolescents who hang out with troublemakers are more prone to exhibit antisocial conduct and consume drugs. Fourth, kids strive for peer accept acceptance and to impress their closest friends towards the middle of adolescence. And the last is co-offending. is the act of engaging in illegal activity with others as opposed to acting alone. And the next is youth gang. Here, we have groups of young people who act out in a delinquent manner. Young individuals who gather in groups with some uh, regularity and uh, adhere to organizational norms and membership standards that are established by the group. Groups with defined leadership and membership rules that uh, include adults and juveniles who break the law. Also, we have graffiti and posting. In graffiti, Delinquents employ uh, inscriptions or drawings they make on walls or other structures to define their turf and send gang signals. On, post, uh, on posting, we have uh, gang members employ a set uh, of postures, facial expressions, and body language to transmit messages. And also the makeup of gangs. Here, the ages of gang members vary greatly but they tend to stay in the groups longer than in the past raising the average of the group gangs have historically been seen as a male dominated industry then the number of female gangs and their members is quickly rising today that's the end of my discussion about primary causal and contributory factors in juvenile delinquency But wait, let's talk about the reasons for juvenile crimes to understand juvenile delinquency better before I end. Uh, here are the table, table of contents. First, we have the violence at home, lack of moral guidance and uh, supervision, poor education quality, poor school performance, substance abuse, peer pressure, uh, socioeconomic factors uh, their lives uh, just started fight for their rights and then the violence at home and that's all guys ito na nga po ang outro at ending ng aking uh, vlog discussion or video about uh, primary causal and contributory factors in juvenile delinquency uh, make sure po na panoodin nyo tong video ko and uh, mag enjoy kayo dahil marami po kayong matututunan dito about uh, sa mga child uh, abuse ganun and uh, maraming salamat po and sa mga future criminal criminology dyan baka usayan nyo and uh, tatapusin ko na po ang uh, vlog na to I'm Charles Michael Garcia from BSA 3Y1-1 God bless Peace